Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I declare this a sacred place. And the declaration does not come from anything that I or the entourage has done. It comes from the old souls who sit before me. Oh, you think it's just another meeting. Here you sit, enjoying perhaps another energetic channel. But that's the 3D of it. You have any idea? The cumulative experience in this room of what you've gone through. To be an old soul and sit here. You may have never heard of any of this and be here for the first time and yet you are an old soul dear ones and you know you are that's intuitive if you have to ask if I'm an old soul probably not unless you're just filled with self-doubt and need to hear it probably would not sit in this chair or be listening to this channel unless there was some inkling of truth that rings into your psyche that says he's talking to me and I am it's bigger than you think When you start describing that which is the spiritual attribute of the human being, it gets big. And it gets big really fast. If you look at most belief systems on the planet, I'll tell you this, not to be insulting to any of them, but honestly, you're looking at the children's version of something so much bigger. When you live your life, you decide for yourself. Every single moment, you decide. You get up from the chair, you sit down. You go someplace, you come back. You make decisions about where you're going to live and where you're going to work and if you're going to have children and what you're going to name them. All of these things you do on your own. What if instead there had to be a doctrine around every single decision you made? Am I going to stand up? Well, let me consult scripture. Am I going to sit down? Wait a minute. Let's find out what they say about that. And you don't because you have free will. Doesn't it make sense that the spiritual body that you have, that part that's the higher self, doesn't it make sense that it would be as free as you are as the human? Think about this. Use spiritual logic. That is so plain the adult version is this. You have choice. And you don't need the, the rules around it to love God. You don't. It's intuitive. And you seek. You seek. That's what you seek. It's beyond some veil, perhaps. It's not clear. It's like a, like a fog. And this morning... I said that fog helps to be cleared by being quiet. That's what meditation does. It puts you in a state of preparedness. The fog starts to clear. And you start to realize there's a connection happening. If you quiet yourself, you can hear, feel, sense that there's a connection about to happen. Not to reiterate two channels that happened before this one, to just to say the connection is what the preparation is for. You don't just sit there and prepare and be happy unless you don't understand there's a connection. There is. I, I want to talk about 
beyond the connection. The channel I gave before and called Included was in Egypt. I want to talk about after inclusion. What it means. The first step is this. You start the meditation, you get very quiet, and you start preparing, and you realize there's an inclusion. There is something approaching, perhaps. It's this wall of belief. You're going to have to get through it. We mentioned before, it's almost like you dialed the number and God picked it up. But all you're hearing is heavy breathing. <laughs> Indicating there's someone there. But there's no communication. No, not yet. Well, you are there. You're almost there. The connection has been received. And now you go through the wall. A figurative wall, metaphoric wall, a belief. Where you start to then cognize what you're doing. And then the connection is made. Then the communication begins. There are so many who don't understand that. But I want to talk about it. Not for a long time. But boy. I want to talk about it so you'll understand it. What happens when you get past that wall of belief and you go through it. And you realize you're connected. You're included. And that changes everything. And if what I'm about to tell you is something you've never experienced, then you know where you are. You're standing at the wall instead of having gone through it. The first thing that is occurring Occurring for you, the very first thing is going to be a peace. Peace. P E A S C E R. Crying cat spell. <laughs> that was funny. My partner really had a good time with that one. <laughs> Satisfaction with everything a peace that comes over you that is so complete it is not explainable not explainable peace that passes understanding it can't be you're too peaceful someone will look at you in a, in a world that's chaotic where everything is wrong and they'll be tearing their 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 hands in and, and ripping their garments and all the things says, woe is me, how can we get through this? And you're sitting there smiling. That's scriptural. That's the love of God. That's because you got through. That's because on the other side of the line, you don't hear heavy breathing anymore. You get instructions. And the instructions are not words that you understand. They're feelings. A peacefulness that come through and you sit like my partner did in the chair for the first time overcome so much that you're weeping because you realize you are included you got through the first thing you feel is peace peace I'll tell you something you may not agree with the human brain is designed to worry it is it's called self-preservation survival it hasn't got all that much better than you were running from the Bengal tiger. You're in a society that's competitive. You're looking at what's around the corner. You're looking at what to do next so you can survive. And you know I'm right. You worry about your kids. You worry about everything. Because you don't know what's coming and you're fearful. And even those who say, well, I meditate and I'm a light worker and all, you're still designed to worry because you're human and a low energy. Dear ones, that is conquerable. Conquerable. Because when you go through that wall of belief, you're included. You're included in the family of God and that countenance creates peace. It's so good. 
My partner experiences this constantly. How would it be to sit in such a peaceful state no matter what was happening around you, no matter what, where you could smile and say thank you for this. I'm not worried, I'm not concerned, I'm alert and I'm aware and I'm wise. I'm alert and I'm aware and I'm a wise. That's different from worrying. I can sense intuitively what I must do when I must do it. But right now I sense what I must do is sit and be loved by God. I'll shower in the light for a while and be peaceful in all of that. That's what happens first. That's the first thing. If you haven't received that, dear ones, you have not gone all the way through that veil yet. Part of that wall is still sticking to you. The one that says you're designed to worry. But then there comes so much more. Ask any of the physicians in the audience what happens to a human being when they're not fearful, when they're peaceful, when their countenance is one of humor, compared to one who is the opposite. And they will say, I can see it over the years in how they age. Who has the better chance of surviving a disease? You know. Who has the better chance of of living the longest, you know. It's the one who's peaceful. Because chemistry starts to echo the decision you've had to go through the wall. What have I told you about your chemistry? It's allied with your consciousness. That the human being can give instructions to their chemistry. And your chemistry will understand it hear it and act on it. That is the principle of homeopathy. A tincture with an instruction will do so much, often even more than chemistry alone. Healing, real healing, natural healing. Because you're dealing with instruction sets to the cells and not a physical chemical. That's what you have. Consciousness homeopathy. You start to show the cells a peacefulness and you become healthier. Ask my partner how many times he's missed meetings because he was sick. And he'll tell you over 30 years. Never. What are the odds? Ask my partner the last time he had the flu, and he'll tell you. 45 years. You start to ask my partner how he lives his life, and he does it in peace, without fear of these things. They're not part of his consciousness. And yet there are others who sit and worry about what disease they're going to catch next. One of the worst things you can do is watch your media. Because if you're not careful, it will then define what you're going to catch next. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. There's an industry out there that makes a great deal of money if you get sick. And they'll tell you all about it. When you go through that wall and you start to have this peace, there isn't anything that's going to get through that's going to change your mind about who you are. And your health will start to improve. The energy that you would naturally have as a human being becomes clean and pure. And your body senses it. And that creates youth. I wouldn't sit here and give you this unless you could see it around you, in front of you. 
This is not pretend spirituality. This is practical spirituality. And then there's the next one. The next one just enhances the other two. I'm going to call it knowingness. Knowingness. What other word do you have for an intuition that tells you about things around you that are true or not true? A knowingness. It starts to encompass you where you know that you're included. A knowingness goes beyond that which is 3D. It knows a little bit about who you are, the future of where you're going, and the past of where you came from. Because it is all-inclusive, multidimensional knowingness. If you have never experienced it, this isn't going to help. Again, explain color to a blind person, and it doesn't work. I cannot explain knowingness until you sat and had it. And you know you're included in the family of the Creator. You can call that family God or Spirit, but it's the creative source of the universe. And you sit and you know it. At that moment, you know that death has no sting. At that moment, you know you're coming back. At that moment, you know that all is well. And you can sit in that energy. And it's not a meditative energy. It is an energy that feeds you every moment, every second. In comes the spiritual food of light that creates the old soul's countenance wisdom. That's where you go next. I'm giving you what's happened to so many of those on other other planets before you who have gone into graduation, passed through that veil, went through the test like you did at 2012, and have come through it for thousands of years, and have grown in it, and there's no more war on this planet, and they can create with the physics all the food they'll ever need. Because they have control over it. They understand it. That's the future. If you choose it, dear ones. There are those who would hear this channel and say, it's all ridiculous. It's all crazy talk. <laughs> and I'll tell you why that is the thought. Another time I will give you an axiom. Low energy cannot look up to a higher energy and understand it. Low energy cannot look up to a high energy and understand it. Again, I'll use the color scenario. You're sitting there with other old souls talking about shades of blue and green. And a person who can only see black and white hears you talking and going, they're nuts. What are they talking about? Because in a low energy, you can't see color. That's a metaphor. That's a metaphor for the light that comes through to regular humanity. You've got to choose to stand up and be enlightened. An old soul, you may have had an akash which pushes you here and you sit in the chair, but I'll tell you, the next step is nothing that's going to happen automatically. But it's so easy. Dear Spirit, I've been told that I've got to stand up and go through that veil. I'm standing up. Show me which way to walk, will you? And that's when you get intuitively the idea, walk this way, metaphorically. Each one of you will have a different path and a different length that it may take to get to that place. But that place is an enhanced, evolved enlightenment way past meditation. That's where the healers go. <laughs> That's where the shamans go. That's where the gurus go. When you wonder, where did they leave to? <laughs> and that is the next step. 
It's happening on this planet right now. It's happening to souls just like yours. It's beautiful. It's what happens when you start to understand evolvement of the human spirit. Past that which you call consciousness, there is enhanced consciousness, awareness, knowingness, peace, health. And the final one, the wisdom of compassion. And I didn't say compassion and I didn't say wisdom. I said the wisdom of compassion. The way compassion is used and worked as a tool. Compassion for yourself, compassion for the situation, compassion for those who are unlovable. Wise compassion. The compassion of the masters who walked this planet and showed you how it works and showed you how the love of God can change a life of one or many. This is not about religion, dear ones. It's about the practicalness of the creative source that lives in you. That's what your soul contains. The soul is believed to be in every, every human. Almost the entire planet understands that. In nautical terms, how does a ship's register describe humans? They describe it as souls on board. It's ancient. The understanding. That you're more than just flesh and blood. And that is being enhanced right now. I've just given you some steps, some results. I didn't even tell you about the tools that are coming. Because this is the first thing you've got to do. You've got to get, get beyond the belief. Cognize who you are to be included. Included in the family of God. This is what we teach and there will be more. And we will become more esoteric and yes, more strange. <laughs> Especially to those who wish to stay in black and white. They'll look at those who will listen to cry and they'll say, well, you're off the wall, you've gone too far. <laughs> and you'll look at them and say, not far enough. And only you will have the knowingness of what that means. I'll be back. And so is.